Adolf Hitler, Idi Amin, and Stalin. What, what brings to your mind? Hatred, despair, whatever. These are mass murderers, OK? They are killers of the highest degree that use the power at their disposal to kill millions of innocents. What about this one? This one is so small and so tiny that you could swat away with your hand. But it's a killer all the same, OK? We do know that all these various diseases, malaria, dengue, some, some things that we don't even know of, Zika nowadays, uh, yellow fever. So it's a killer which has progressed over the centuries and masked itself. When you could actually swat it, you still can't do anything about it. We all do know that today there are more obese people in this world than all the man I was just in Ethiopia. And even all those Ethiopians combined, still we have more obese people in the world. Obesity today kills more than 300,000 people in the US alone every single year. It's not counting the diseases that it causes. But the problem is that it comes along with another big, big epidemic, OK, diabetes. Now, diabetes today is these two epidemics together are called diabetes. Obesity linked with diabetes. And today, diabetes, there are 450 million diabetics in the world, and it's counting. Okay, India was supposed to have 75 million by 2025. We are already 63 million. And that's the big problem. We are second only to China. We are amongst the top two obese nations in the world just because of our numbers. And that's the big, big problem that we are facing. Today, every six seconds, someone dies of a diabetes related death. And I hope this kind of wakes you up. We are not even aware when we are diabetic. We just pass it off by saying, oh, let me get one more shot of insulin, one more tablet. Let me go to the next diabetologist, because he's better than the one I already have. The problem is today it's killing people. All right. So let's go back to time and history when man evolved. Okay. Man has evolved from being the hunter, the gatherer. Think, think about millions of years back when man actually had to go out and hunt for his food. He had to go walk miles and miles just to get some food. Then he used those flint stones to try and ignite a fire light that fire, and then feed his family. So when his wife, and a lot of husbands and wives refer to themselves as honey, sugar. Today it's man. His wife says, honey, can I get a pizza? Oh, just a minute. He sits on the couch in the comfort of his AC room, picks up the phone, and now he doesn't even have to call. Speed dial. And there comes his pizza. And the, and the good thing is that if it comes 30 minutes, a minute later than 30 minutes, he doesn't even have to pay for his food. So that's the big problem that we face today, that, that man of today is used to this. And that's why his food choices are so different from the food choices of the Paleolithic man, who used to eat almost nothing. There's only one difference. It's processed food. But processed food today is killing us. OK. So how many of you know of the Venus of Willendorf? Venus of Willendorf is a four and a, four and a half inch statue in the Museum of National History and Art in Austria, in Vienna. But the men of that time thought that the women needed to be buxom, be big, because fertility was a very, very important thing. And all of them perceived their women to be good when they were like this. But today's man, he wants all his women to be thin, though he can keep putting on all the weight. The main idea for change is this, sugar. Not the sugar that we see, the sugar that we consume. It's the sugar that we don't see. Okay. So WHO says the only sugar that you're allowed is the sugar which is present naturally. Sugar in your vegetables, sugar in your milk, and sugar also in your fruits. So basically, glucose, fructose, galactose, and ribose. What is ribose? Well, ribose is the one which is present in your DNA, and that's why you need it, all right? Now, the, the big problem is that do we need sugar at all? If sugar is so harmful, why do we need sugar? Well, every cell in your body has got something which is a powerhouse called mitochondria. Now, the mitochondria for its sustenance needs sugar. Without sugar, he dies. And that's why we need sugar. But we need naturally available sugar, not the free sugars. OK, WHO says the only amount of sugar that we are needed, all right, is six teaspoons for a female and nine teaspoons for a male. That's free sugar, not the naturally available sugar that we eat. They say that it should be less than 10% of your average daily total intake. And less than 5% if you want health benefits. We are a sugar-addicted world. These are the various known names of sugar that we have, right? I have a lot of people come up to me and say, brown sugar, demerara sugar, oh, I have this sugar. This is, I, I've heard this doctor say, this is the best sugar I can have. 
no sugar, no free sugar is good, no processed sugar is good, period, all right? It's only naturally available sugar that you can't see in your vegetables and fruit that you can have. Now look at the other last two or three. High fructose corn syrup, cane sugar, malt sugar, maltodextrin. Why is high fructose corn syrup replacing the normal sucrose that we see? It's cheaper, it's more sweeter. It's got more fructose contained than glucose contained. That's why it's cheaper. So all companies prefer it. All your drinks, from your sodas to everything, from your noodles, everything has got high fructose corn syrup. These are not names you associate with sugar, right? But these are all disguised sugars. That's why I say it's like a Trojan horse. It's like one of those enemies who hides and comes in. And we allow it into our homes. We welcome it into our homes. And once it's come in, it's already too late to do something about it. Now the fruits, okay? Olives contains almost zero sugar. But look at the other uh, raisins, okay? We have a bunch full of raisins. It's got 43 grams of sugar, just half a cup. And that's how we need to change our thinking, how we, we perceive sugar. Now we come to the most favorite topic, okay? All our cold drinks and various other things. And we think, okay, how does this affect us? How does it have sugar? And why does Coke and Pepsi have so much sugar? Okay, 8.5 teaspoons or 8.75 teaspoons of sugar. Okay, let me do this little demonstration for you. Okay, this is a glass. Now, whenever we go home to anybody's house, Indians, we are very hospitable people, we say, Ek chai le loke, how much sugar will you have? You'll say, I don't have sugar. Someone will say, two chamach. That is how much sugar? Someone will say, teen de do tia. That's how much sugar we have, okay? Now, this is three teaspoons. Now, one, two, three, four, five. That is how much your Coke can has. 330 ml of Coke can. When you supersize it to 500 ml, or take those giant tumblers, it's much, much more, okay? That much. Now, think about a Frappuccino. How many of you have gone to Starbucks and had a Frappuccino? That contains 25 teaspoons. <laughs> now, Let's go back to the politics of the story that I was trying to tell you, okay? So we go back to a time when 40 or 50 years back, most politicians thought food is a big issue in elections. So let's get into how do we control it. So they said, fat, fat makes us all obese, guys. Let's cut out fat from our life. And they won elections, so it became a big thing, all right? Well, fat, we do know it's harmful. It's harmful in the saturated fat that we have in full fat milk, in the red meat, and various other things that we do know. But it's also very, very helpful, right? I'll tell you why we are going wrong, okay? Fat is not to be blamed. Otherwise, the ketogenic diet that some of us are on will never work. We actually lose weight when you're just protein and fat diet. It's not that harmful. It still absorbs multivitamins, which are uh, fat soluble, which are A, D, E, and K. It still benefits us in our immune system. It still benefits us in our nutrition, in our bone health, in our skin. A, D, E, K, eyesight. So fat is not all that bad, okay? I'll try and explain to you why fat-free diets are, are really harmful to us. So when we, excess, when we eat excess food, it leads to obesity. We all do know that, right? So when we remove the saturated fat, we believe it is bad. We remove that saturated fat. We come to how do we replace it by unsaturated vegetable oils. Because when we, when we use vegetable oils, we have to undergo a process called hydrogenation. What hydrogenation does is it brings us trans fat. Now, all of you all will say, oh, trans fat is bad. It's like MSG. I will never have trans fat, and that's what but it took us 30 years to realize trans fat was bad, okay? Now, despite it not knowing about trans fat, we also need to add something else to remove the fat for the texture and the taste of food because we are not going to have bland food. That was sugar. Now, sugar also works on the stomach, on the brain. It's a very, very poor drug for satiety. It just doesn't work well enough for satiety, all right? And therefore, we keep feeling hungry. The next fat-free yogurt, the next fat-free biscuit, Everything goes down so easily because we are hungry. The craving is there. At the same time, we eat more and more calories. And there was a study done by Ahmed where he exposed a rat to cocaine for eight days. Then he took the cocaine away and he exposed him to just sugar for two days. Then he gave him both. What happened? He went only for the sugar, let alone the cocaine. We thought cocaine was addictive. Look at sugar. It's eight times more addictive. It's one of the most harmful, chemically harmful substances that we've turned into a comfort food for rewarding good behavior. And that is why eventually we all become fat and obese. It's not an immediate killer. It's not like me pointing a gun to your head. It's one of those silent killers. It's like one of those white rats that eat you up and before you know it, you've collapsed. All right? This is a picture I took in Vienna outside the Natural History of Art. It said, the elephant in the room, it's the sugar. 
okay? Ignore it at your own peril. It'll kill you eventually. Please, please, please don't ignore it. 